Let's talk about density. Get out your science notebook. Here's the essential question. How is density used to classify matter? Before we get into that, I want to tell a story. This is a story about King Hero II, who was king of Syracuse, Sicily in ancient Greece. The story goes that the King Hero decided he wanted to fashion a crown. So he grabbed a lump sum of gold and gave it to a blacksmith, and that blacksmith supposedly turned it into a beautiful-looking crown for King Hero. Well, rumors started to spread that the king was being duped by the blacksmith. They said that the blacksmith took the lump sum of gold and doped it with certain types of unprecious metals and kept some of the gold for himself. Now, the king didn't want to assume anything, so he called the most smartest person he can think of, Archimedes, to come and figure out whether his crown was made of pure gold or not. Now, there was a catch. Archimedes was not allowed to hurt the crown in any way, but still had to figure it out. Now, this baffled Archimedes for a while. He wasn't exactly sure what to do. But the story continues, and that one day, Archimedes was taking a bath. And when he got in the bath, he stood straight up and got super excited, so much so that he ran down the street, butt naked, yelling, Eureka! And thus the word Eureka was born. Now, what did Archimedes figure out? Well, we'll come back to that. It relates to density. Density is a physical property of matter that describes the compactness of the particles within matter. You could see here in this image that this substance has a low density, not too many particles. And this substance has a high density, a lot more particles shoved in the same amount of space. Density is an intensive property. Well, that means that it doesn't matter how big our sample is, the density will always be the same. Take a look at this cup of water over here to the left. The cup of water, being a pure substance, has a certain density to it, the compactness of the particles. If I were to take out a drop of water, the compactness doesn't change. The mass and the volume might change, but the compactness of those particles are the same. So density is an intensive property. This is the density equation. This is how we calculate and put a number to density. Density is equal to the mass of a substance measured in grams divided by the volume measured in milliliters or centimeters cubed. I like to remember density as the love equation. If you look here in this heart, the top part of the heart, M, is mass divided by the bottom part of the heart, volume. What is mass? Well, mass is the quantity of particles in matter, the number of individual, par individual particles inside matter. Mass is measured in grams, and that's important. Remember that mass is the thing that we are measuring, and grams is the unit it is measured by. You might see one or both of those inside a word problem. Now, how do we find mass? Well, we typically use a balance or a scale to find mass. Volume is the amount of space matter takes up. Volume can be measured either in cubic centimeters or milliliters, and they both are equivalent to one another. Cubic centimeters is typically done with a ruler. You could see up here, here is a box measured length times width times height to find the volume. Or if we use a graduated cylinder, we're probably using that because the object is irregularly shaped like this rock here. To use a graduated cylinder, we typically put a small amount of liquid inside of it and then put our irregularly shaped object inside the liquid and see how much the little liquid has changed. That is the volume of that irregularly shaped object. All right, so let's try this out. Let's calculate density. Here's a practice. I challenge you to pause the video right now to see if you could figure it out. All right, did you pause the video? Well, if you need some help, let's continue on and see if you got the answer correct, or if you need some help, I'll help you out here. What is the density of a lump of gold that weighs 1,930 grams with a volume of 100 centimeters cubed? Well, the two units that we have are mass and volume. Mass is 1,930 grams, and volume is 100 centimeters cubed. Quite simply, if we throw that in the density equation with mass divided by volume, we can calculate out the density, which is 19.3 grams per centimeters cubed. 
I want to take a moment and point out the unit of density is a derived unit made of both mass and volume. So the unit of density is grams per centimeter cubed, or it could be grams per milliliters. Either way, this is how we designate the unit of density. All right, here's a second practice, a little bit different. Here we have an eight gram gray looking metal and it was measured using a graduated cylinder and found it to be 2.96 milliliters. We can determine what this metal is because density is an intensive property. Pause the video and see if you can figure out what the metal is. All right, did you figure it out? Well, if you figured out that the density of the metal was 2.7 grams per centimeters cubed, then you probably figured out that the metal is aluminum. And we did that just by taking eight grams, dividing it by 2.96 milliliters. All right, taking a look at this density equation, we can do a lot more with it than just finding density. In fact, there's mass and volume in there as well. What if we were given the density and we needed to figure out mass or volume? Well, this is just algebra and algebra sometimes is a little bit challenging. So let me show you a little hint here. We're going to use the special mathematical triangle. This math triangle lets us figure out any type of equation where A equals B over C, or density equals mass divided by volume. Take a look here. You can see inside the triangle, density is equal to, if we put equal in the middle, mass on the top divided by volume on the bottom. So density on the left is equal to mass on the top divided by volume on the bottom. So that's one way we can see how this triangle works. But what if we wanted to solve for something else? Well, algebraically, let's go take a look at our original equation. One thing we can do to this equation is multiply volume on both sides. By doing so, volume cancels out in the numerator and the denominator, but it stays on the left-hand side. Well, look, we now can solve for something different. Here, let me rearrange this equation to show you what we can solve for. We can solve for mass mass is equal to density times volume. Here it is cleanly written out. Well, let's take a look at our, our triangle over here. Take a look. Mass on the top is equal to, in the middle, density times volume, which are right next to each other in that triangle. Well, now we can solve for mass, which is great. Well, let's keep going. What else can we do? We haven't solved for volume yet, so how do we take this equation to solve for volume? Well, again, using algebra, what we would need to do is divide out density. If we divide density on both sides, then density on the right side cancels out and stays on the left. Here, again, let me clean up this equation. Volume is equal to mass divided by density. Well, again, if we look at our triangle, we can see that over here. Volume on the right side is equal to mass on the top divided by density on the bottom. So again, this is just a trick to use algebra to solve for the various pieces of density, either density, mass, or volume. So let's try this out in an actual problem. What is the volume of a piece of silver that has a mass of 32 grams? Well, in this case, we're not solving for density. We're trying to find the volume of something. So we need to know in order to find volume, we need to know what the mass and the density is. Again, looking at the triangle, volume is equal to mass divided by density. So we know what the mass is. The mass is 32 grams. Now, how about the density? Well, this table is given here because remember, density is an intensive property. That means it doesn't matter how much you have, density will always be the same. So we can look it up on a data table. So we're looking at silver specifically. So silver is 10.5 cubic centimeters, or sorry, grams per cubic centimeters, which is the density. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those two values in here, 32 grams divided by 10.5 grams per cubic centimeters, which is the unit of density. If I plug that out in a calculator, I'm gonna figure out that the density is 3.05 cubic centimeters. That's, that, that's the volume, not the density. All right. That's almost the end of our notes. Let's talk about Archimedes again. What did Archimedes figure out? Well, at this point, you probably figured it out yourself. When Archimedes sat in the water, he noticed that the water rose in relation to his body. And that got him super excited. He was the first, or at least we credit him to be the first, to figure out that 
when you place objects in water, the water rises according to the volume of the object. So Archimedes took the crown and he put it in water. He also took an equal mass of silver and an equal mass of gold and put them separately in water as well and watched them rise. Well, he noticed that the crown displaced the water somewhere between the gold and the silver. And he proved that the blacksmith indeed duped the king and put unprecious metals inside the crown. Unfortunately for the blacksmith, he didn't see too many more days to until the end of his life. But Archimedes showed us that we can use science to solve great problems. That's the end of our notes. Take a moment to review and highlight key terms, ponder and ask questions, summarize the essential question, and don't forget to review your learning objectives. Good luck.